Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with a very special episode of Genesis Thoughts, episode number two. We're going to go over the recent announcement of Halo 5 Guardians. Now this is the next installment in the Master Chief storyline of games. Surprisingly enough, uh, Bonnie Ross, General Manager at 3 for 3 Industries, posted an article um, today at 3, 3 a.m. and we're going to go over the article, we're going to go over the poster that was released, and we're going to go over a few thoughts on exactly some of the wording that was um, said, and I'm just going to give my general thoughts on these things. So if you haven't read the article yet, all the links will be down in the description below this video. Of course, you can get the poster in high resolution, you can read the full article for yourself, but it's actually not that long. So if you want to stick around here, I'll hit the high points, give you my thoughts on where everything is going, and hopefully this will be an enjoyable video to catch some of you up who haven't necessarily been in the loop. Now, if you haven't already watched the Halo Xbox One trailer, as it's called, basically Halo 5 trailer, that was released many, many months ago. You should definitely have watched that up to this point, as I will be referencing it. I'll include that in the links down in the description as well. But anyway, getting straight into the article, um, I'm going to be skipping over some parts that aren't as useful or meaningful. They're very general. You have to realize when a game comes out or is announced, they always say things like, um, we're going to do fan service, we're really you know, help, thankful for our fans, we're going to try to make this the best game yet, blah, 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 okay, and I'm going to hit the, the higher points, although the way they word the article um, is very well written, so let's get into it. Um, at the start, starting paragraph says, anytime you transition to a new platform, the Xbox One, there's the opportunity to look at things with a new perspective. For us at 343 Industries, the launch of the Xbox One was an opportunity to think about what stories we wanted to tell and how to tell them and how best to push the Halo franchise to the showcase to showcase the platform. And most importantly, combining our passion for Halo with the vocal and informative input from our fans. Now, there are a few times during this entire article where they mention fan input or the vocality, if that's even a word, of their fans. Seeing as the decline of Halo 4 and um, the population level of the people currently playing it, um, 343 has received a buttload of feedback on the game and how people were, liked it, how people were dissatisfied with it. One of the higher notes being the um, interaction in the campaign between uh, Master Chief and Cortana, the low note being um, the very poorly programmed aspects of the multiplayer and the fact that things just weren't thought out through and frankly the game didn't have a beta so a lot of things had to be fixed later on but by that time um, the game had lost a lot of its um, push forward and this is uh, all rehash stuff that most people know about but for those of you who don't know I'm just trying to bring you up to speed this is um, kind of what they're referring to and I like how they refer to it but not blatantly stated now Skipping the next paragraph, moving on to the third, um, they say, In the past, Halo games have pushed the Xbox forward, showcasing the console and its ecosystem in entertaining and innovative ways. Now, this is extremely true um, for not only the Xbox, but especially the Xbox 360 when Halo 3 came out on it, because it really showed the power of the console and the online capability of it with um, things like theater mode, Forge, the ability to um, post stuff to your file share, take screenshots and upload them, even clips to upload them. Um, this is really pushing forward the technology on the console. And so what they're trying to say here is that pushing forward the technology on the Xbox One will mean other more features. And moving on with the paragraph, they say, making a Halo game that runs at 60 frames per second on dedicated servers, which are two of the things we definitely know about Halo 5, um, with the scope, features, and scale we've been dreaming of for more than a decade is non-trivial, meaning it's not an easy task. They go on to say, um, it's a task that we at 343 Industries are taking very seriously to ensure that we deliver the Halo games that fans deserves and a game that is built for the ground up for the Xbox One. Now, um, I kind of messed up on that last sentence there, but basically this generally confirms that it's going to be an Xbox One exclusive. I hope to goodness it is because I want it to be selling more Xbox One um, consoles. Um, as you may, may have recently found out, the Xbox One dropped um, their price and cut the Kinect. Um, so basically you'll be able to buy the Xbox One without the Kinect for $100 cheaper. So it's going to be $399 instead of the $499. You can still buy the Xbox One with the Kinect, 
but I thought that was a very smart move. They should have um, had that available from the beginning for the Xbox One, but um, for those of you who have been wanting to buy it, um, now as good as time as any. Um, moving on, uh, they say, I'm happy to reveal that Halo 5 Guardians, the next installment in the Legendary Saga of Master Chief, will launch on Xbox One in fall of 2015, that's next year. In the tradition of every Halo game since its debut in 2001, it is a massive and exciting project. Massive is actually italicized, meaning the font is skewed to the side to make sure that that word is emphasized. Okay. I highly, highly think, due to several of the panels and several things, um, one, of the, one of the other confirmed things, by the way, if I may mention this side note, is that Frank O'Connor answered a question very mysteriously saying that Halo 5 will be the darkest Halo game yet. We don't know exactly what dark means, but probably in terms of storyline, character development, etc., things going down in the galaxy. Um, the fact that the word massive is italicized here means a lot. Okay, I think we saw the scale of massive in some of Halo Reach's Matt Forge world. Just some of the scale that you could get was just incredible. And I think with the Xbox One, we're going to be able to see this scale. We're also probably going to see um, scale of big team battle maps, maybe more players in big team battle. But specifically in the campaign, it may be a little bit um, less linear. For example, in Halo Combat Evolved, some of the maps were just huge, and you could run around them um, for you know an hour or two just trying to find out where to go. Moving on, we have um, it's a game that will hopefully demonstrate the talent, learnings, and abilities of the 343 Industries team. Now, again, they state learnings, hopefully learnings from Halo 4 that they've learned. Okay, they emphasize this several times. They Moving on, we, they say, a game that will incorporate the things we learned from Halo 4 about technology, aesthetics, performance, and scale, and perhaps more importantly, understanding and embracing a community of gamers who love what lies at the heart of this game and the limitless potential of the Halo universe. This is stunning that they actually mention their previous title, because especially since the fact that it didn't do as well. Okay, Many people... Um, in their announcement of their next game will not really mention the previous game because they want to obviously differentiate the next game and you know not really mention the previous one because they don't want to get a lot of conflict between what will be from carry over from the previous game into the next you know will it be the same will it be similar will there be new features etc they don't want to really broach that topic but I think this is as much as we're going to get as an apology from 343 in terms of the um, rushed aspect of the multiplayer, if I may say so. I think that's that's a fact that's been rehashed so many times it's not even funny. The multiplayer was rushed to an extent, um, specifically the ranking up system and several other balancing issues, um, seeing as a patch did come out later. But um, moving on, we have, and 2015 won't simply be the year of Halo 5 Guardians. It will also be a year that offers us a unique opportunity, the opportunity to invite old friends and new audiences into that universe through the Halo television series, launched as a unique collaboration with Steven Spielberg and some of the finest creative minds in the business. A series that will stand alone as well as complement and enrich the game experience. We'll have more to share on the Halo television series as we near its projected fall 2015 release. This will release probably around um, Halo, Halo 5 and it will probably complement the storyline very well and hint at certain things and I'm really looking forward to that. Now. This is where things get pretty interesting, okay? Because a lot of people are going to wonder, why did they announce Halo 5 before E3? Like, what is the purpose of that? The purpose is hype, obviously, and I'll definitely address that at the end of the video because there needs to be some strong words said towards the topic of hype. But um, it says, your journey begins in 2014, bold letters, and then it moves on to the last two paragraphs, which say, many fans noted that I this being um, the general manager, Bonnie Ross, I was very deliberate with my phrasing at stage, on stage at E3 last year. I spoke that a journey, in quotes, rather than a destination, and that journey definitely begins in 2014 with a giant leap, rather than one small step. We'll give you much more information about our plans for this year at the Xbox E3 2014 media briefing on June 9th, and we're confident that Halo fans will be pretty excited about the special plans we have in store. So until E3, I'd like to express my gratitude to our massive and varied Halo community whose energy, enthusiasm, criticism, and kindness are the driving force behind what we do and what we hope to achieve in Halo 5 Guardians. Now, this, I hope, is Halo 2 Anniversary, what they're hinting at. If it's not, okay, 
I could see them doing another project, and that would surprise me also as well, but I sincerely hope it's Halo 2 Anniversary with multiplayer and with beta access to Halo 5. Similar to how to Halo 3 ODST was a mini, sort of mini game transition between the three year time span we see between main Halo titles, and it was a beta access to Halo Reach, um, similar to how that was done. I really hope that's going to happen, crossing my fingers. Um, I also, in my personal opinion, hope that Halo 2 Anniversary, if it comes out, um, actually has the multiplayer on the disc. Um, I hope that you're not required to start up the Halo 4 engine, and that will be where the Halo 2 multiplayer is. I hope that is not the case. Um, I hope they do a unique multiplayer experience inside the game. But this is a lot to throw on 343 shoulders. You have to realize that um, I would much rather prefer them to create a good multiplayer experience in the Halo 5 Guardians than I would prefer them to create a super top-notch experience for Halo 2 Anniversary. That's my opinion. Please gauge your expectations for what we see this year. While they may be hyping it up right here, gauge your expectations because the less work they do this year will mean the more work going into Halo 5. Okay, So keep, keep that in mind as a positive more than a negative thing. Now, I'd like to move on to the poster. Okay, and the poster, which you probably you can see right now and have been seeing up until this point in the video. So my first thought is, um, it's obviously the next chapter in Halo Master Chief's story. They added on Guardians, likely because they wanted to separate it from other Halo titles. It's coming out on the Xbox One. They want to make sure that it's the new thing. Okay, you know, kind of like Halo Combat Evolved was kind of a new thing, and they're di differentiating it from. Again, this just goes into my thought process of the campaign is going to be very different. It's going to be more open. Um, I really hope that is the case. Um, and then it's they want to really separate it from Halo 4, um, probably to differentiate um, the, themselves from that game, for sure. Then we have, the title is a little vague, in my opinion. Um, hey, they, the only mention we have of Guardians that readily comes to my mind, while I'm sure there's many other mentions of Guardians in the lore and books and things of that nature, are the Guardians that kill you off in uh, Halo 3 and stuff when you get outside the map. You're killed by the Guardians. So seeing as that's kind of the first area of where my mind goes, it's a little odd for the title. I think that will be clarified later, so it's not a big deal. Um, the map named Guardian in Halo 3 obviously draws my attention very quickly. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm just saying that's what the first thing that where my mind goes, so I think the title needs to be clarified a little bit more. Um, it's a good overall title, though. I feel like it's solid, and it doesn't, you know, it's not a fail or anything of that nature. Um, moving on, it specifically states Guardians, plural, meaning multiple, okay? Um, the poster features multiple Spartans, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna heavily analyze this, okay? Um, I'm surprised by the fact that Master Chief is not on top. If, I, top. if I can flip around the picture for you, right here, you have Master Chief appearing on the bottom, okay? Now, I'd like to very clearly make you look at the background, not Master Chief, but the background that he's standing in front of, okay? You have this sort of building a little bit off to his left, or some structure. Then you have the sands and everything, and left and right rock structures, and that's things of that nature. Flipping it over, you can see that the exact same thing is on the top, except it's obviously a mirage or a reflection, okay? And except it's a completely different Spartan standing on top. Almost looks even female, okay? Now, I've had some confirmed reports that this probably is not a female, which could be easily be the case as there has already been plenty of sand in the Halo trailer, or Halo Xbox One trailer, and we still see sand in this wallpaper, very likely to see a lot of sand, uh, sandy levels in the campaign, definitely some sandy levels in multiplayer. I definitely would like that since um, from like Halo 3 days and with the sandy maps in that game as well. Then you have the battle rifle and assault rifle confirmed. I'm so glad the character on top, regardless of whether that's Master Chief or not, is holding a battle rifle. Um, it irks me to death that Master Chief keeps holding an assault rifle when the main competitive and by far the better weapon used is the battle rifle for sure as it kills you faster and it is overall just a better weapon in general. Um, and moving over to Master Chief, you see that he's holding the assault rifle in his left hand. Um, he wouldn't be doing that unless it was a reflection. Okay, You can see it, obviously it's a reflection because um, the character on top is holding a battle rifle, he's holding an assault rifle, um, and he's holding it as the left hand. It's obviously a reflection if you really were a stickler about that one. Um, now, my ideas on what this t t top Spartan could be. Okay, I'm going to start with the most unlikely one and move on down to the more likely ones. 
in Halo 4, if you very carefully went over the um, terminal videos, which you can look up Halo 4 terminal videos on YouTube. You should watch them all as they contain just as much information and overall plot and story as the Halo 4 campaign itself. The Halo 4 terminals are extensive in helping you understand the characters in the Halo 4 campaign. In fact, um, it's arguably you are missing a huge portion of the Halo 4 campaign if you're not watching these videos and you're not going to understand a whole lot of stuff. Okay, Specifically the um, motivation for the diadect and the um, librarian as well. Um, in those videos they specifically mention the composer which um, they're trying to merge synthetic and organic life. Now, many people attributed this as to hints that Cortana could come back in this way. Cortana being brought back into some sort of human body via a synthetic and organic merging. And obviously, as we saw in the terminals, this didn't work out. This technology did not work out for the Prome Prometheans and that sort of thing. Um, but it could work out in the future. Master Chief could fix um, whatever the problem was with that device and make it work. So. My first guess, and very unlikely guess, is that this top character is Cortana, some sort of merging. It would make sense that she's in some sort of Spartan because she needs to be durable, obviously. And um, it could be a Spartan that Master Chief, that follows Master Chief or is tasked with watching him or being his guide or being a companion to him. Seeing as Master Chief's mental psyche was v very consistently wrapped around with Cortana. And what I mean by that is not a lot of people get into this Master Chief loves Cortana sort of thing. I'd like to address this for just a second. Um, Master Chief is Cortana's companion. And the best words I could describe it, um, Cortana is a combination of Master Chief's mom and his best friend, not his lover. Okay. Now, many people would argue that the more sexually appealing um, model of Cortana in Halo 4 is more indicative of a romance plot line. Um, your mind is just going to places it shouldn't to be honest. I don't know why you would think that. Um, obviously, if the character is going to die off in the storyline, spoiler alert, they're going to make the character more appealing right before their death. Okay, And the fact that Cortana can alter her physical appearance to whatever the heck she wants is cool. So, kudos. you know. Well, in my personal opinion, seeing as Master Chief's psyche has been so heavily wrapped around Cortana and that she has been his companion up to this point, um, you see this companionship for a while, and even when he lets her go in Halo 2, he promises to return. She says, don't make a promise you can't keep. Obviously, he returns anyway to get her. And this goes outside his Spartan training. This goes outside all of this. So I could imagine this character we see here at the top of the poster being someone who is tasked with being his companion, or, or at least being someone who follows him around. It could even be a robot or something, or an AI, something of that nature. We don't know. Okay, we, we don't know at this point. I want it to be Cortana, and the blue visor is like blue, you know, oh, Cortana, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we don't know. We simply have a no clue, all right? Um, moving on, a second more likely uh, thing that someone pointed out is that this could be the Master Chief himself. Now, while the body type seems different, okay, it could be very well likely due to the mirage or the reflection aspect of the poster that this is, in fact, Master Chief that we're seeing on top. Okay, A reflection of him would obviously indicate him moving on. Um, seeing as this is the darkest halo yet, we could see Master Chief siding with the Forerunners, as we saw at the end of the Spartan Ops campaign, um, sort of Catherine Halsey um, going over to um, being against almost the UNSC and being very, very negative towards them in many aspects. We could see Master Chief... Um, pairing with her and what's left over of the librarian, her goals. They may go against the UNSC in many ways. Um, that's why I think that Master Chief is going to butt heads with the UNSC and many other humans in general, as he did in the Halo 4 campaign with some of the, the main officer that we saw aboard the UNSC Infinity. Um, that will happen more. People are going to call Master Chief crazy. Okay, People are going to question his sanity, as did happen in Halo 4. It's going to happen more and more often. What we're seeing here, though, is that Master Chief is so insanely strong um, that he could be chosen to be a guardian or something of that nature, someone who transcends time even, possibly. I'm not even sure about that, but um, and goes on to protect the galaxy as a warrior beyond the, the level of power that we're currently familiar with, one of the power of the diadect and things of that nature. We could see some really far-out cool stuff here. 
that would be cool if the top character is um, the Master Chief. Okay. Now moving on to a third, and I think that's a little, more, little bit more likely concept, because um, I, I find it difficult to think that 343 would just give Master Chief different armor. Seeing as the character model does look different on the top, I think it's more likely that this is another character. And my personal, as I've already kind of went, gone over, my personal um, main idea that I think I have to ha has to have the most credit for it would be that this is some sort of Oni bounty hunter that is sent to go after the Master Chief or, or just some sort of person to keep track of the Master Chief. Because as we see in the Halo, um, the Halo Xbox One trailer, the Master Chief is dressed in some cloak, going off on his own with Cortana, with an AI chip of some sort. It's clear that he's going after Cortana or trying to get her back or going off on some mission of his own while doing so while hiding and then being in very torn, like a battered armor and everything. Obviously, he hasn't been in, in a, at an armor station aboard the Infinity or anything recently as far as we see him in the Xbox One trailer. He's clearly got some goals of his own. Okay, and it doesn't. I don't think he's going to just change his armor. Now, I could be completely wrong, but this other Spartan could be another character we play as in the Halo 5 campaign. Seeing it, and please, please ingrain this in your mind, we are seeing another Spartan, possibly not even Master Chief, on the main first released poster for Halo 5. And seeing as the game clearly indicates a massive structure for it, I would highly, highly suggest that this game could include multiple characters you play as through the game, okay? This other character on the front being the second main character you play as. Maybe there he'll his or her um, path in the campaign will intersect with Master Chief, okay? That would be really cool. Again, it would be neat if maybe a bounty hunter was sent after Master Chief and then he or she got convinced by Master Chief that, wow, this guy is really not insane. He doesn't need to be brought in, and he's seriously on a mission to save the world and to really, you know, figure all this stuff out, which would be really cool if we see some collaboration on that end in a sort of rebellion. You know, um, it's just, it just neat. I, I really, there's a lot to look at here, um, as well as the Battle Rifle and Assault Rifle probably being confirmed for Halo 5. The fact that they feature another, possibly another character on the main cover and Master Chief as a secondary, okay, it, that's why... I don't think this character is the Master Chief because he or she appears on the top. Okay, If it was a reflection of Master Chief and Master Chief was going to change, the reflection would be on the bottom and Master Chief would be emphasized on the top. But seeing as it's a completely different character on the top, possibly not even the Master Chief, I don't know. You know, Maybe this is a different character we play as. Maybe this is Master Chief in the same armor. We don't really know. It's just really cool to think about. So um, uh, moving on, some of my final thoughts on this announcement overall. Um, while I would like Halo's anniversary with multiplayer to come out, um, I really need to be very clear about something, okay? And that is hype for this game. Clearly this video is long, clearly I care about this topic a lot, and the ideas and um, various things I threw out as to what could happen in Halo 5 are pretty dramatic, and they're pretty game, you know, game-changing and where things are going. I don't know that any of this stuff is going to happen. I'm just speculating. But speculation and hype can go too far, okay? And this is very a very delicate topic, okay? And I want to be very clear. Getting excited for a game is not the problem. Hyping it up to the point where every little piece of news comes out and you are freaking out over it and saying, oh my gosh, this is going to be the best game ever, when you really don't know for sure, you don't know that it's going to be the best thing ever. Um, Halo 4 and Titanfall are great examples of this getting so much hype only to go okay this really did not live up to the hype before the game came out I'm sorry it just didn't okay it, it, it didn't on the initial outset it looked pretty good but it just in the end in the long term it didn't end up living up to the hype this is why you do not want to buy into the level of hype that most people do do not constantly watch YouTube videos like if you've watched four or five videos up to mine up until mine with Halo 5 Guardians, don't watch another video for the next month or two, okay? Just saying, okay? Distance yourself from the content. Only watch what's important, and more specifically, read more than you watch, because people's words can get construed in your mind, and you might end up thinking that the Halo 5 Guardians is going to be a certain way, and it ends up not being that way. You'll be disappointed. I've seen so many people, this happens to them, where 
they follow the game so religiously up until the point of its release that they have a completely skewed up mindset for certain aspects of the game that come out nowhere near what they thought it was going to be. And then for other aspects, they're dead on and they already know everything that's going to come out in the game and nothing surprises them. You want an element of surprise going into these games. It's okay to speculate, as is this is a picture. I'm speculating over a picture, okay? So, I mean, there's only so much harm that can come from that, right? But I have seen people countless times um, hype up the game to the point where it's embarrassing once the game comes out and fails to, to a degree. I'm saying fail lightly here. Um, that's a strong word for what Halo 4 did, seeing as it sold more copies than any previous Halo game. I'm specifically talking about failing in terms of multiplayer and the amount of people playing multiplayer right now. And you'd be extremely clear on that. Okay, I'm not, Halo 4 did not fail, all right? It, especially in terms of sales, it did not fail at all. Um, what I'm concerned with is the reputation of 343 that may have been dented and the, the uh, competitive community overall that was burned from a game that did not provide the competitiveness of online multiplayer that people desired. All right? That is my concern, and that is where the failing happened. And so it is, it is crucial that Halo 5 Guardians not be hyped up in a negative light to the point where people think, wow, this game is so hyped up. Like, I've even heard people say this about Destiny. It's so hyped up, but we don't know that much about it. This could not be that great. Like, it, we don't even know anything about the multiplayer of Destiny yet. You know, we don't even know much about Halo 5 Guardians at all. So what I'm saying is, take things with a grain of salt, please. It's okay to speculate. But 343 has to prove themselves. You should approach the standpoint of not you know, mindless consumer, nom, 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 nom. I'm going to eat up whatever 343 gives me like it's a bunch of cake. And, oh, I love cake. Ha, ha, ha. You know, no. You should approach this from the standpoint of 343 has to prove themselves after not doing so good last round. You know what I mean? Like, the campaign, it was on the short side, had serious potential. Halo 4 overall had serious potential. That cannot be stated enough. But, wow, was it executed poorly in some areas. Um, and I, this is saying from a guy who's played, you know, past 90,000 kills in the online multiplayer um, with many, 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 many days of playtime. I eat that game up. I love it. But even I will admit that it's not the best thing ever. You need to make 343 convince you that this next title is good. You should make them do the work. Don't, don't try to, you know, I mean, obviously I might change my wallpapers to Halo 5 Guardians and be promoting the next game. But please, please, Hype is temporary. It's an emotion more than it is a logical, rational action to something. It's crucial to the building up of a game, and it can also be crucial to the destruction of the well-being of the company that made the game, The how people view that company, Okay, their reputation, should I say. Now, there is an opposite to hype, and that is people hating just to hate. One of the biggest examples I'm going to have to have, all right, and um, the people who can't get over the Xbox to the Xbox 360 transition, okay? People who, you know, are like, ah, oh, Halo 3 wasn't as good as the previous games, and yeah, that can be said to be true in some aspects, but um, Halo 3 was one of the more glitch-free Halo multiplayer games. Halo 2 had several bugs and glitches that you could exploit. And it made the game interesting and cool, as many people will point out. They, some, some is, sometimes it even made the game for them. They really like that. But um, pushing technology should be the goal, all right? And there will be, I guarantee you, people who hate on Halo 5 Guardians, regardless of how good or bad the game is, because they don't want to buy an Xbox One. And that sounds really harsh saying that. Seeing as the game, the console is now priced at the same as, it is, as the PlayStation 4, there really is not much of an excuse unless you're going through, you know, you have legitimate excuses, obviously, with college and other things of that nature. Um, there really is not a whole lot of excuse um, if you are hating on the Halo 5 Guardians when it comes out, um, every nitpicking every little thing, when ultimately you just don't have the console because you don't have enough money and you can't play the game, so you're just sour about it. That sh that's the opposite of hype, obviously. And so drawing your expectations between those two extremes and being positive and hopeful while 
maintaining a logical expectation of what is going to occur with Halo 5 Guardians is ideal. And it is critical that you provide feedback, not hating on things to the point where you sound ridiculous in an emotional conclusion that just really doesn't come out making coherent sense, um, but that you also point out things and compare it to previous Halo games, how it got better, how it got worse. This is one of the best and most safest ways to start out with um, you know, going into analysis over a new game. So guys, I hope this video overall really helped you to understand my thoughts on the matter. I know this is a rather lengthy video and I'm not, it's not very polished as compared to many of the other videos out there that would summarize this information in a much shorter fashion. But I had strong feelings on this topic and I wanted to get them all out in one area. As, as I said, the links are in the description down below. Subscribe for future Destiny, Halo 5 Guardians, possibly, hopefully, Halo 2 anniversary content. And as always, the Halo 4 tips and tricks videos and gameplay reviews, map reviews that I'm going to be coming out with in the future, more another montage or something of that nature. Definitely subscribe for all that. Like the video. It helps other people find it. And I'll see you guys on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Carry the fire. Peace.